We are here with our very special guest right now, Evelyn Gould, who is a BCBA, a board certified behavior analyst, for those of you who are new and joining us. And I want to take a second to talk a little bit about what board certified behavior analyst means. And, you know, we've been talking a little bit here uh, from time to time about is this a job that people might be interested in? Uh, is it something that a parent, I know at one point somebody had suggested to me early on, you know, if you're going to learn all this stuff, you might as well become a board certified behavior analyst and I went what no yeah. I'm not doing that and I think at my age it's uh, it's not the thing for me but I know other parents have done yes, that have. and maybe maybe it's something that we need to share a little bit so what when you're a board certified behavior analyst what does that mean well it basically means that you have met certain educational requirements and then um, also been supervised by another clinician who's qualified um, they've supervised a certain number of hours of your practice and then you've sat an exam and submitted all that, mm -hmm. all evidence of your supervised practice and so on and, and, and passed the exam and then mm -hmm. you're, you're issued with a certification. It's just like you have um, you know, other kinds of professionals who have certification mm -hmm. and that's just it's basically telling the public that you have met certain requirements and that they, it's, it's like a standards mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and it's literally a license, right? It's licensure, yes. so it is bound by licensure. legal uh, ramifications. I mean, you have to do certain things in order to keep the license, and you have to uphold certain things to keep the license. Is that correct? Yeah, you are expected to follow certain guidelines, um, ethical guidelines and mm -hmm. conduct codes of conduct mm -hmm. in order to keep your license and to practice within your training ability mm -hmm. and your um, competencies as mm -hmm. a behavior analyst uh, and that means that you shouldn't be engaging in certain other things that you're not an expert at right and you shouldn't be recommend making recommendations that are outside of your area of competency mm -hmm. and if you do any of those things then you can be disciplined by the board that has issued your certification and that can and they can eventually take your licensure away from you yeah and also now with insurance funding and so on they a lot of companies and um, or insurance companies and so on are requiring the person who they're paying to provide services to have certification yeah because for them uh, you know they're not experts in ABA right. and they're saying if we're going to pay for this we want to make sure that the person has a level of expertise at yeah. this I think it's a reasonable expectation for mm -hmm. them if you're gonna pay for something uh, you know if I go and I'm gonna get the brakes fixed mm -hmm. on my car and I'm gonna pay for that to be mm -hmm. done I want to know that the person mm -hmm. has done work on brakes before right. and that somebody has certified that they've yep. done not just their say so they're yes. not just the yes. word on it and our kids are pretty important important to us yeah. and if we're going to invest the time in ABA we want to know that it's somebody that there is some sort of governing board that's mm -hmm. looking at this and saying this person has completed this much time yes. um, but we should also say that not everyone who's a BCBA has experience with right. autism. Yeah, it's, I mean, the thing about it is it's kind of like a, a, a at least one standard that you can look at right. to get, a, get at least you know some kind of gauge of, of a person's education and a person's expertise but of course there's you know, you can have an, a, someone who's a BCBA who has 20 years experience of autism and has very, very is, uh, done excellent work. And then you can have a BCBA who's only just passed the exam and maybe doesn't have any experience in autism. Mm -hmm. So they're not comparable. So you really need to be looking at the person's licensure or certification and their experience and right. where they've worked and the types of things, types of populations they've worked with and, and um, you know, the activities that they've engaged in as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, and there is a site that will tell you whether somebody actually is a BCBA because mm -hmm. it's a word that's being batted around a lot right now. And I, one of the things that I appreciate that's happening with insurance is that I think that insurance is going to also be double checking these mm -hmm. kinds of things because yes, absolutely. there was a case back east, and I don't want to say which state because I don't remember, but there was a woman who was presenting herself as a BCBA, saying to families that she was a BCBA, mm -hmm. and they were believing her, and she was doing something. I don't know what it was she was doing with the kids. But then later on, everybody found out that she was not a BCBA. Mm -hmm. She did not have a license. Mm -hmm. She did not have experience. She had not gone to school. Had mm -hmm. not, you know, she just was uh, a con person. Mm -hmm. And I think, 
for all of us who have children on the autism spectrum, doesn't that seem like the ultimate in, uh, I, don't, I don't even have words for how disappointing it is that somebody would try to take advantage of families who are already in hardship dealing with this. But it's the reality that people are going to do that and we have to be mindful. And uh, I appreciate that insurance companies are saying, you know, it's got to be this or. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and, and not only that, but they do have a credentialing process. So they're, they're going to check up on you. They're not going to take right. your word for it. Right. Um, they're going to check that. And not only just check that you have the certification, but they, they also have requirements regarding experience. Mm-hmm. So that it might be that you have to also have had two years experience in autism or whatever it is mm-hmm. they require. They have a bunch of different things that they are looking for before they will agree to fund, uh, fund you. Yeah. provide services. And you also, to keep your license, you have to do continuing education, yes, you don't do. you? you have to do a certain number of hours of continuing education in order to maintain your certification, and that's standard for, I think, any really any kind of professional certification. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've seen some of the, the continuing education things that you guys do here, and for, uh, I got to sit in on some of them. It's really quite amazing. We were just, I don't know if you heard, we were just talking about a comment that somebody had shared about a developmental pedi- pediatrician who told their child to wait it out Ah. Uh, you know and and I wish that they would force all the developmental pediatricians and all of the pediatricians to take specific continuing education with autism Mm -hmm. Um, because things happen and things change I know that they have to do continuing education but they can choose what they want to do yeah I think generally you probably can choose I mean I know for our certification the only requirements is that you have to do a certain number of hours in ethics Mm-hmm. and practice but other than that really um, you're you're choosing your you're supposed to be choosing your continuing ed mm-hmm. in relation to your work yeah and what's useful and you shouldn't be just attending I mean they actually track what you what you're right. attending so you can't get credits for attending the same class over and over right it has to be different classes from my understanding so if they see you listing the same class they're, they're not going to accept those hours you can only yeah. get the hours once for one class but I think you know it's the continuing education topics that you guys mm-hmm. cover the things that are available um, and you know for parents if that's something that you're interested in you can attend some of the continuing education things you don't necessarily want the credit for it but they're fairly inexpensive and very educational yeah usually you can sign up for them um, I think you can probably sign up for them you don't have to be mm-hmm. a, a certified person right. you just can't get the R's but it does depend probably depend on who's providing the training probably. as to as to what what who the training's for right right mm-hmm. absolutely but so let's go back and talk a little bit about if there's a parent who's watching and they're investing a lot of time and learning about ABA and implementing this with their child and thinking you know I, I'm getting this and I really think it's awesome and I want to be able to help my child and then I want to go on to help other children maybe this is the thing for me mm-hmm. the thing that's striking to me is it's seems like there's a great deal of job security in being a BCBA right now. Mm-hmm. Well, it's definitely an in-demand field yeah. at the moment, and I wouldn't be in this country if it wasn't, uh-huh. to honestly. Um, uh, yeah, there's, there's, right now there's, there's jobs for BCBAs, and, and there, I'm constantly getting emails with for organ from organizations who are looking for people and yeah. indeed card is as well yes so uh they're hiring mm-hmm. for bcbas but it's not an easy path mm-hmm. there's quite a bit that you need to do to be a bcba yeah. so first of all you have to have a master's degree correct you do unless you're going to be an assistant behavior analyst okay. um, you can get a certification but that means that you're not able to practice without supervision from a, someone who's certified fully certified mm-hmm. um that only requires a bachelor's degree Okay. So that's a board certified assistant behavior analyst. Okay. But so if you want to be a BCBA, it requires a master's degree mm-hmm. first, and ideally a master's degree in psychology. Yes. Um, they're very specific about what you have to have studied. Mm-hmm. So even if you have a master's degree, you would need to go and they will check whether, what well, other class, you might need to take some more classes right. or courses because um, they, 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 they require certain topics to have been studied right. and a certain number of credits and so on. For me, my master's degree is not in psychology. So when mm-hmm. I looked at it for a couple of seconds, it was I was basically going to have to go back for a year and a half and take a bunch of core classes mm-hmm. that I didn't have. I had some classes, mm-hmm. but I didn't have the core. So even if you have a master's degree, yeah. you might have 
have to go to school for a couple of years yes. to do that. Yes. Um, and then there is a specific track, isn't there, that's for the BCBA to study to be able to pass the tests, the boards? Yes, I mean, you don't have to do, yeah, you have to, so you have to start to study a certain number of course, uh, certain core subjects and mm -hmm. so on, and those courses need to be approved by the BACB, mm -hmm. and that's what you need for the, to sit the exam. So okay. if there isn't like a separate course that you take to okay. sit the exam. I see. It, the, cor the coursework is the coursework that you need to take the exam, I if see. that makes sense. Okay. Some people do go on to s take study courses, which is basically prep courses for the mm. exam, but that's not required and you don't need to do okay. that. I did not do that. I didn't have the money to do that. Okay. Um, I didn't have the time and I had worked for a really long time and mm. um, felt like I didn't it wasn't a necessity, mm -hmm. um, but some people do prefer to do that because they, you know, especially if you have like anxieties about exam right. issues or you're not confident about the material that, that you need to know. Um, but if you do meet all the educational requirements, then you've basically covered everything that you need to take the exam. Okay. But as I said, you need to make sure that the courses that you're taking are approved by the BACB because you could go ahead and take a bunch of courses that sound like they're the same, right. but are not approved, and okay. then they won't count. Okay, and then, and we should say too that besides the coursework, there's a certain component of hours that you had to have worked mm -hmm. with clients. Yes. Uh, it could be children on the autism yeah. spectrum, but it could be other things it as well. Be it's any, a large it, yeah, number it's of not just about autism. Like you, there are behavior analysts who work in organizations doing mm -hmm. organizational management. So that's mm -hmm. working on, say, staff um, competency mm -hmm. or motivation, motivating staff productivity, and so mm -hmm. on within organizations. There are BCBAs doing, uh, working with adult populations, clinical populations. There are BCBAs working in all sorts of things like sports. safety and yeah, health safety and, and sports yeah. and like so the activities that you do don't have to be autism they can be any they can be working within any field provided that you are applying your knowledge right. your, you know behavior principles right. to your work and they kind of have a lot of guidelines and, uh, and outline what could be considered uh, appropriate activities and what are not considered okay. and, and they're really wonderful about talking to you on the phone and if they if the person on the phone can't give you an answer they always get someone who's who's more experienced or knows knows has more knowledge to phone you back and, and okay. talk you through it if you don't if you don't know but how what is the hour it's huge I just know yeah, the hour so requirement the maximum it, it's I think it's like it's not even it's not that much it could be worse it is worse <laughs> for other fields so uh, right now it's actually not too bad it's about 1500 hours 1500 you have to have worked hours. and you can only work 30 of those a week so you can't get four, you can't do 40 a week the maximum you can have count is the 30 a week so you're looking at a year to 18 months I think of, of working in the field and being supervised by someone who's already qualified um, who is basically meeting with you every week or every other week or so and signing off saying yes this person did this and these are the things that we did and this is what we talked about and this is what I saw Right. And gives you feedback as a trainee as to, to improve your practice. I just want to bring that home because for when we talk about having a BCBA on mm -hmm. your case, I just want people to understand that it's no small thing. Mm -hmm. um, but beyond that, as you said, we need to look and see is the experience mm -hmm. that they have with children mm -hmm. with autism, do they have experience with the behaviors that mm -hmm. you're dealing with, um, that that's important, but that if you've got somebody who's a BCBA and autism mm -hmm. is their field, such mm -hmm. as yourself, you know, at the very minimum, it's somebody who's taken a great deal of coursework, is continuing uh, to take coursework, and has spent a minimum of 1,500 mm -hmm. hours in the field working with a child. Mm -hmm. That's huge for a parent to understand mm -hmm. that that's who you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. uh, so that can be a very exciting thing. And again, if they want to check to see that somebody's credentialed, what is the website that they go to? Because it's letters and I always it's mess it up. It's the BACB. It's very confusing because you have the BACBA is the board certification. Right. But the organization organization is the Behavior Analyst Certification Board, so that's the BACB. BACB, mm -hmm. okay, dot com. And so you can go there, by the way, and search and see who the BCBRs, BCBAs yeah. are in your area. You yeah. can put in your, your zip code and, or your state, and it will tell you who there is. It's a very great resource mm -hmm. for knowing where to start when you're looking. Yeah, because I think that everyone has to be listed on there who's certified. You can't necessarily, some people allow you to contact them through that site, mm -hmm. 
but not everybody you're not required to have your contact details on there but I think you are you don't get to choose whether you're listed okay as far as I know right uh, so a great thing if you're working with somebody right now who is saying to you that they're a BCBA go check it out mm -hmm. go check it out and make sure that they're listed there that is you your definitive way of also ask for their license number so they they will mm -hmm. have a license number and you can ask for that and then you can check with the BACB if, if that license is valid or if they okay. know who that person is okay and uh, and again if you're not working with somebody who's a BCBA at this point but you want to be that's a great place to start and look and see who is in your area I always tell you go to centerforautism.com first and, and check the locations tab and see if they're close because that's my preference but uh, and card is in more places than anybody else but they're not everywhere yet uh, so you can go to that website and see who is close to you <music>